Hi, in this video I would like to talk about spelling correction in the context of virtual assistants. So here's the situation. We have a user and this user utters some text. Next, this text is passed to a natural language understanding pipeline of sorts, after which we hopefully are able to extract some useful information. Typically, this would include entities, as well as a intent. Now, a valid concern here is that the text that we're going to receive here could contain some really bad spelling. It might be a typo, it might be slang, whatever the reason, it is going to have an impact on our machine learning performance over here. And that is why some people have started wondering if it might be a good idea to apply spelling correction. The idea would be that we don't pass the text directly to our machine learning pipeline, and that instead we're going to first pass the text to a spelling correction tool, and that this corrected text is then something that we are going to pass in to our machine learning pipeline. On paper, I really get the appeal of this idea. Theoretically, you could argue that by doing this, the NLU pipeline over here is only going to receive text that is spelled correctly. However, I have noticed in practice that this path is a little bit dangerous. And what I would like to do in this video is just run a couple of quick benchmarks that highlight why this might not be the way forward if you are concerned about spelling errors. I'm inside of a Jupyter Notebook now, and what I've done is I've installed two popular Python spelling correction libraries. And what I'm just gonna go ahead and do is I'm just gonna play with them a little bit to see how they shine and where they might fall short. The first thing that I'll be doing is I'll be using the text blob library. I'll be giving it a little bit of text, and then I'm going to ask it to make a correction if there is a spelling error. In this case, it seems to be going fine. Hello, my name is Vincent, doesn't have any spelling errors. But let's now change this around a little bit. Let's say instead of saying hello, I'm going to say howdy. Now, granted, howdy is a somewhat unique way of saying hello. You could argue that it's not very common. And that's probably why it doesn't exist in a vocabulary set or maybe even many dictionaries. However, I would argue that turning howdy into rowdy isn't a good thing. The meaning of the word changes by doing this. And in this particular case, I would argue that text blob is not doing what I'm interested in. Let's change something else. Let's say that I misspell my name with an F. Vincent. Okay. In this case, it did the spelling correction correctly. It noticed that the F was supposed to be a V. But there are also some other spelling errors that could be happening. For example, I might be missing the first letter. Let's see what happens when I run this. It now turns it into intent. And I cannot fully blame the heuristic that's at play here. If I consider the token incent, then I could wonder, well, what are some words that are actually very similar? And maybe if I had a big corpus, I could have names in it, so it might be able to say that Vincent is plausible. It might also be able to say that intent is plausible. But then you have to wonder, if you're the spelling correction tool, how might you pick between these two options? A common heuristic is to use a probability measure. What you would do is you would count how often the word intent appears in English text, and you would do the same thing for Vincent, and you would pick the word that has the highest likelihood. And this will work plenty of times, I'm sure, but you're also going to be making mistakes. And that's the general problem with a lot of these autocorrection tools. Spelling correction, in general, requires context. Only when you consider the full sentence that we have here, are you able to understand that howdy should remain as is, and Vincent should not be made into intent, but into Vincent. So let's dive in a little bit more, just to get a glimpse of what kind of errors we might get. After all, this might just be a one-off error, and it will be interesting to see what would happen if we actually supplied some virtual assistant data. So again, I'll be using the financial demo repository, as a baseline for the text that you might expect to see. So just to give a bit of a preview, I already loaded this data set in. I have put it in this 
variable called x. And here you can see just a couple of utterances that you could expect to see inside of a virtual assistant. Some of these examples will have spelling errors. Many of them won't though. And what I'm just gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to have text blob attempt a spelling correction. And I'm also going to use the autocorrect library for good measure, just to see if there are any differences here. I already ran this. So what I now have is I have a list of corrected spellings from the text blob library, and I have a list of corrected spellings from the autocorrect library. So what I'm gonna do just to explore the different spellings that we might be able to expect is I'm just gonna have a look at how the spelling corrections made over here differ from the spelling corrections made over here. After all, these are two different libraries, so odds are that the internals are different too. And here's what we end up with. I have my original text over here, the text blob correction over here, and the autocorrect examples over here. And what I would just like to do is just get an impression of when spelling mistakes are triggered, and also if they're done correctly. The first example over here is interesting because it is a name, Katie Paro. And it seems that both spelling correction tools have an opinion about this. From the perspective of a spelling correction tool, you could look at this word Paro over here and say, hey, that's spelled wrong. The English language doesn't have a word called Paro, so that has to be translated to either marrow or narrow. In both of these cases, though, I would argue that this spelling correction is incorrect because we're dealing with a name, but it also deserves to be said that this is a general weakness of spelling correction tools. If we're dealing with a virtual assistant, then we cannot assume the text to be properly capitalized. And I think that this is also the reason why the spelling correction is triggered in the first place. I also hope it's clear that there's a bit of a danger when we're learning on Katie Paro over here, but that in production, we're going to instead see Kate Mero or Katie Nero. I can certainly imagine that whatever classifier we have will get confused when it sees these examples, which don't appear in the training data. And note that we have a couple of these names that pop up over here, so names might be a general concern. But you can also see that some non-English can also be a bit of a bother here. Let's look at this example, the word adios. Technically, you could argue that it's not English. You could argue that it's a Spanish word. However, you could also argue that adios is common enough also on TV, such that many people would know what it means. In any case, it will be bad if we had a spelling correction tool that turns that into ladies or into radios. But again, I can't imagine how these corrections have come to be. If we are comparing words to an English corpus or a dictionary, then I can imagine that from a word distance perspective, there aren't that many words like adios, so it's probably going to end up with something completely different. Also notice that abbreviations suffer as well. There's a nice example here where we're trying to say thanks, and this gets translated into the, which only differs by one character, but the annoying thing here is that the is a stop word. And because it's a stop word, we're also likely going to misinterpret what's happening. Similarly, names of companies usually are a bother. Uber, for example, well, yes, that's the name of a company, but that shouldn't be a user. And also some internet slang will be a bother here because things like yep with double p could get translated into yelp which is also not what you want the tricky thing here is that spelling correction typically requires a lot of context but in the realm of virtual assistants it's hard to get context because some of the messages that we receive are very short indeed we're usually not dealing with sentences we're usually dealing with just a couple of words and given that we have so little information to go on at times it can be very dangerous if we assume that a spelling correction tool is going to automatically be able to understand the context that we're in. Now to continue the thought experiment, one extra thing that I could do is I could train a machine learning model on my original data that I started out with. And then I can see how this trained machine learning model deals with text that has been corrected by text blob or autocorrect. And I'm not making the fullest comparison here, I'm just keeping things simple, but one thing that I am able to see is that just on the train set, the original performance is about 98% accuracy. But if I introduce spelling correction, the performance actually goes down a chunk. 
And again, this is on the train set. And again, this is not the fullest benchmark, but it does again highlight that there's a little bit of danger here. Simply because what comes out of a auto correction tool can be somewhat unexpected and perhaps even doesn't align with the context that the virtual assistant is in. And note that this effect might actually be amplified if you're using word embeddings or language models. In fact, you might also need to be worried about entity detection systems. As we saw before, the name of a person can be turned into a token that represents an object. So also here, you gotta be really careful. Hopefully, when considering all of these separate aspects, you might come to the conclusion that even though the idea behind a spelling correction tool sounds very plausible, there are still plenty of concerns left that do deserve to be double-checked.